General, Sergeant Wills said from the doorway, President Tooley is here. Good, General Hirano said, looking up from his desk. Please show her in. The general stood and walked around the desk, his hand clasped behind his back. General, President Tooley said as she entered. She craned her neck up to look at the human towering over her as usual. She only came up to about mid-thigh of the general, but she never felt small in his presence. Madame President, please come in, the general said. He waved at a chair and the president's stubby legs carried her to it. The general had installed a small sitting area in his office with one human-sized chair and smaller one more comfortable for the smaller aliens here on their homeworld. How bad is it? President Tooley asked. She had climbed up the two steps into the smaller chair and made herself comfortable. The smaller chair was raised up just enough that both parties could speak comfortably to each other with contorting into an awkward position. The general had ordered his people to rework the arrangement seven times before he hit on just the right combination of heights without seeming disrespectful to either. Very bad, I'm afraid, General Hirano said. The Kellen ships dropped out of hyperspace about 15 minutes ago and are en route. The only saving grace is that they dropped out of hyperspace quite far from here. It will be a good six hours before they reach firing distance. President Tooley looked down at her feet, dangling over the floor in the human compound. I suppose you'll all be leaving us then, she said. No. No? No, the general said. We won't be leaving. At least, not all of us. I don't understand, the president said. I have just under 3,000 humans here for which I am responsible, the general said. Of those, I have 1,237 uniformed personnel, including myself. The remaining 1,700 plus are civilians. The uniformed personnel will stay and the civilians will evacuate. They are already packing up, and our transports will launch well before the Kellen arrive. In fact, we practiced with having no more than 30 minutes to evac, so we're actually a bit spoiled for choice here. But the uniformed are staying? Uniformed personnel, yes, the general said. Yes, they are staying. Me and my soldiers will not be on any of the transports. But why? You know the Kellen have promised to bring death and destruction to my world, the president said. Now they have arrived with a fleet of warships to do just that. You should go. We appreciate what you have done for us. Teaching us, helping us prepare ourselves, cultural exchange. That's not the mission. What? Those things were not my mission, the general said. Then what is your mission? And why did you do all those other things? My mission is to be a deterrent, and failing that, to die. What? Madam President, the general said, we are here to help you. We've always said that. But our help wasn't the classes or the technology or the medicines. Our help was our lives. The other things were just to pass the time. Since we were here already, we figured we could pitch in. The people of my homeworld didn't want to get involved in your war with the Kellen, the leaders of my people would not force them into such a position, so they hatched a plan. They would send a small contingent of advisors and soldiers to help out the less fortunate. The president started to open her mouth to object, but the general held up his hand. I know, he said, you have a rich culture, and I agree for what it's worth. But I'm telling you how my leaders sold it to the people back home. A few thousand people on a humanitarian mission, more or less. No one could object to that, and no one did. But that was a cover, a deception. Our real mission was always to stand between you and the gun so that the bullets would hit us first. I'm not following. The Kellen are a middling force in this sector. They don't want a war with Earth and her allies. At least, if they're smart in any way, they don't. So if they attack your world, they risk hurting humans. If they hurt humans there's a good chance they get that war with Earth. But you are relying on them acting logically, the president said, that they will weigh their options and decide without emotion. Not really, the general said, because we knew they were likely to start a losing war, or, if not likely, at least possible. Nation states do that all the time, for a thousand different reasons. Maybe they don't think Earth will really go to war, maybe they think they can win, Maybe they think they can take the planet without hurting any humans. Who knows? 
The specifics don't matter. We all took the risk to come here. But you can still leave. You said so yourself. Oh yes, probably, the general said. I'm sure we could find enough room on the ships. But we won't. Every soldier here knew the risk, and every one of them volunteered for this assignment. Have you never noticed there aren't any children? Pardon? Human children, the general said. There are no human children here. We have almost 3,000 people, a third of which are female, yet not one pregnancy, not one birth, not one child. Even after years on this world, did that not seem odd? We are not in the custom of asking other species mating and procreation habits, the president said. We thought perhaps you only mated seasonally and were between seasons. No, we mate full time, the general said, but let's not get into specifics. Suffice it to say, we dosed every bit of human food with contraceptives. We had to set up that giant waste processing plant to keep that out of your ecosystem. That's why it's so over-engineered. It's filtering out a ton of birth control. No one here is having babies. We also made all the women get tested every three months or so just to make sure no little one slipped through. I am proud to say there have been no pregnancies for my three years here. That seems harsh. A bit, maybe, the general said. But again, everyone knew what they were signing up for. Every position here is voluntary. I imagine they searched far and wide to find enough humans to take this posting, the president said. I beat out over a thousand other candidates for this assignment, the general said. And that's just one position. The process to select the CO of this garrison was quite competitive. Much of Earth's military hated what happened to you in the League. When you lost two colonies and they threatened the embargo. Why would you care? We've never been much of a power, either diplomatically or militarily. Not even much of an economic power, really, the president said. We, humans, that is. We have a soft spot defending the defenseless, the general said. You were never a threat to anyone, and the Kellen just came across as bullies. So, sure, there's really not a lot for us to gain here in any sort of measurable way. But there were plenty of us who couldn't stand by and let those assholes destroy you. This, this is difficult for me to grasp, the president said. But I believe you and I thank you. Why do you say your mission is to die, though? I said my mission was to be a deterrent and failing that my mission was to die, the general said. But the reason I say that is that if I, and my people, are killed by the Kellen, there is no force in the universe that will stop Earth from going to war with them. They actually did some kind of study and determined the optimal number of humans that needed to die to kickstart a war like this. The answer was between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Any less, and people would have written off as a tragedy but ignored it. Any more, and it makes us look unprepared or like we had done it on purpose. But you did do this on purpose. Well, yes, but it can't look like we did it on purpose, the general said. It has to look like we were here for some other reason, and the terrible Kellen arrived and killed us. The president sighed. I suppose there is no talking you out of this. No way to convince you to save yourselves? None at all, I'm afraid. Then, the president said, I thank you for your sacrifice. Your names will live on as great heroes of my people, General. You may just give us a future.